from Angel. I actually took things that were spread around the course and brought them together in one spot. put in the images section a file of navigation and flash. Again, I, I, I sorted there's some that are redundant, that are duplicated in other areas, but that's okay. see extra files like that start with an underscore that's typically because I make it on my Mac and you can sort of disregard those. Alright. HTML is in essence, what we just did. I have a home page. <clears throat> or I have a series of pages that are all linked together that have little animations on them. All right. So that's effectively what I did. The only difference is, is these are just blobs moving around. Uh, and I don't have thumbnails. I just have regular hyperlinks. I will post the example we did today, though, because I think that's a, a pretty good one. All right, so there's that one. Next one we're going to look at is having one scene. And we've looked at this, we've looked at something very similar to this before when we did the, the guy climbing up the wall. If you remember, the guy that climbing up the wall didn't start until we clicked on him. It was our first exposure to any sort of action script. So that's what we're going to do in this particular case. All right. In this case, I have two images and a thumb, you know, a thumbnail for each of the two images, and I have a big image and I have another big image. All right. Now, if I run this. This is how it behaves. <coughs> when it first loads, I simply get those thumbnails. And again, I could put some text there if I wanted to. When I click on this, it goes to that. When I click on this, it goes to that. All right. Notice this is all within Flash. All right. And everything's within that single SWF file. Now again. Imagine the difference from the user's experience from loading this versus the first example I have. In the first case, the person is only loading one image's worth of animation at a time. In this example, the person is downloading all the images because all the images are part of the SWF and all the navigation and everything is included within Flash. So, what's the impact of that? The impact of that is that for the first version I did, the page is going to initially load quicker, right? Because I'm not loading every single image's animation in it. I'm just loading one page worth. This one's going to take longer to load. However, as I navigate between pages, it'll happen quicker because I've already loaded everything. Whereas in the first solution, 
you'd have to then download the second page's worth. Yes. So when you say the first solution, you're talking about your HTML? My HTML solution. Yeah. Okay. The okay, first one you did today. Okay. All right. So let's look at how we do this. What we have to do to do this is we have to make these guys behave like buttons. In fact, if we look, well, we have them as a movie clip, but we could make them a button as well. And we have to put ActionScript on there. Now, ActionScript is a full-blown programming language, and it can be involved. And one of the reasons that I don't go into more ActionScript in this class is because people are coming in here with a, with a varying degree of programming experience. All right? So I'll show you some, and I'll show you some basics, but that's one of the reasons I showed sort of an HTML alternative, because if you don't, you're not very strong in programming and not very experienced in programming, you might want to consider the HTML alternative. All right, let's look at the action script. So I'll go up under Window, Actions, and I have this chunk of code. And I'm going to go and bring it in to... Notepad++, so that, or, or actually Notepad, so we can really take a close look at, at this code. All right. First line of the code is stop. That should be self-explanatory. What does that do? That stops the animation in its tracks. All right. T1, add listener event, mouse event click, T1 event handler, or T1 click handler, rather. Okay, let's break this down one piece at a time. What do you suppose T1 is? T1 is the first thumbnail. Yeah. Notice that I have up here an instance name. I don't think we've bothered with instance names before because unless you're doing scripting, action scripting, they're really not necessary. But since I am doing action scripting, it is necessary. So I've given this a name so that I can refer to it. I have to give it a name because I have to do different things when users click on different things. Right? It's not like you know, I'm going to do the same thing regardless of what they click on. So I have to say specifically, this thing, when a user clicks on it, I want to do something special. And you name that? I named that T1. I gave it an instance name of T1. Right. And likewise, I gave this one an instance name of T2. So <clears throat> what do these things say? T1 says add event listener. What that is doing is that's attaching a snippet of code to that movie that's going to do something when the user does something. It's going to be listening for a particular event. Listening for, waiting for, detecting, however you want to call it. Well, what is this event listener listening for? It's listening for, it's waiting for, the mouse click event. What does that mean? Well, when the user clicks their mouse into it, this piece of code is going to go into action. All right? So what this is saying is, T1, be waiting because the user might click on you. And when the user clicks on you, this is what I want to do. All right? So that's it in a nutshell. Hey, T1, be waiting for, be listening for the user to click their mouse. And when they do, do this piece of code. T2 has roughly the same thing, except as you notice that there's a T1 click handler and a T2 click handler. Why do we have that? Well, because we're doing different things when we click on each of the buttons, right? When we click on T1, we want to go to picture one. When we click on T2, we want to go to picture two. All right, so what do we have for T1 and T2 uh, click handlers? There's simply a line of code that we specify a function and this is a group of statements. We could do a whole bunch of statements, but in this particular case, we're only doing one statement. We're saying, hey, we're handling that event, and we're not going to return any answer. That's what the void means. This part will be the same for all click 
handlers. All right. But what are we doing? We are going to and stopping on frame two. Well, if we look at our animation, what is frame two? Frame two is the frame with the first image on it. What is frame, the, and, and what is it for T2? Go to and stop on frame T3. And T3 is that one. So, we've seen a couple different commands that we can do. We can stop an animation. We can go to a frame and stop. And we can also play uh, an animation. So, what we can do there then is, is when we put all this together, we have our two thumbnails. They each have a name. One's T1, T2. They're both waiting for the user to click on them. And when the user clicks on them, it's doing some particular piece of work. In this case, it's going to and stopping a particular frame. Now, this is a name I made up, right? T1, T2. I could have named those thumbnails anything. This is a name I made up. All right. In other words, I could have had them do different things. I actually could, you know, have it do the same thing all the time and have it called the same function. But that, in this case, really wouldn't make any sense. All right. And you put it all together, and that's what you have. Question. Did you write that code or that code? No, I wrote that code. Oh, to make it do that? Mm -hmm. There's no intelligence. Well, I don't know. It might be IntelliSense. Where did you get that code? And where did you write it? Oh, where did I write it? Yeah. Yeah, you go into Windows and Actions. And if you're in a frame that has that little A next to it, see on the timeline? Might be hard to see right there. Okay. I'll move. I'll move to another frame. A there. That indicates that there is some action script on that frame. All right. Okay, so if you go to that frame, did you click on anything to write it in there? Yeah, I, I, I just what I did before. I went to Windows Actions. So Windows Actions will show me my code. And then you just wrote it. And then right. is there? Do you save it or it just? Yeah, it's, it's part of the object. It's just like if you added a label onto the page, it gets saved. There. It's just associated with that. But you only have to do that for the one, the initial frame one that you don't have to do it for all the other ones. Well, let, let's follow that through. That's a good question. Where does this code need to live? Well, if you look, look at how my layers are constructed. And this will be a, this will be a, a good uh, suggestion. If I'm not mistaken, What I would do is I would have my navigation on one layer, and then you don't even have any keyframes, any other keyframes on it. And you just have that script, and then you have your animations on separate layers. So each animation is separate layers? Yeah, well, that, that we should know from the fact that if you're going to have a motion tween, you can only have one on, on a layer. But the added extra component here is that your navigation should be a layer in itself. I'm going to try to do something real quick. Copy and paste this code. I'll copy it. And this is out there, and I'll post my other example out here. I want to try doing something else that maybe will be easier to see. All right. I'm going to go in, and I'm going to create just a silly little animation that... just going to go and just fade this in and fade it out over and over and over again. So 
So I'm going to go set the alpha to zero. Go on the last frame. Set the alpha to 100. And if we go and play this, it's just going to fade in and repeat endlessly. How do you think we could make something that would stop it and start it? All right. Let's try to put a button on here that will start it and stop it. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to create a button. Let me go and import. Um, I could, but that's probably a good suggestion. I probably should create it on a different layer based on what I've said before. Let's go in and import to stage the thumbnail for that guy. Now, when I go, oops, when I go and convert this into a symbol, but I'm going to pick as a symbol a button, all right? And we'll talk about why I'm going to do that in a minute, all right? We may or may not get to that today, all right? But I'll go and, and we'll do at least this far. So I'll make that a button, all right? Then I'm going to go in to that layer under Actions, and I'm going to give this guy a name. The name of this button is button one. Or I'm going to call this button stop. All right. And I'm going to go in here and say button stop. stop animation. There is no second thing on this one. And I will put in this function simply the command to stop. Alright. So, now if I go in and run this, So I'll go in here and I'll test this. The animation is going to play over and over again until I click the stop button and stop it. Now, I could have a start button too, but we've run out of time. All right? We'll pick that up. Now, <clears throat> one of the reasons I went and made that a button is we can do some things like button over effects, mouse over effects, and we'll look at those next time. So next time we'll look at mouse over effects and we'll look at 
um, how to start this up or, or how to do other forms of navigation. All right. Again, do keep in mind that for the purpose of this uh, presentation or, or your, your slideshow, you don't necessarily have to incorporate any of those ingredients into it, uh, but it would be a good idea if, if you would try. Uh, in addition, uh, this is definitely something that you need for your final project, so think through how to do this. Um, we will be going over any of this. This is almost sort of getting into the advanced uh, animation portion of the, uh, of the class, so I might rearrange the schedule a little bit to do that next. All right. Uh, I will save what we have to Angel, and uh, we'll pick up on this next time. All right.